Hey guys, it's Danny here, back with a new video. Um, I have no new models to show yet since yesterday. So today I am going to show you guys how to cast uh, and make uh, duplicates out of resin, uh, as I have promised you in a previous video. So before we begin, I wanna make it clear that this video is for educational purposes, all right? It's just to show you guys how this can be done by yourself at home. Unfortunately, there is many people out there who would be judge me and judge you doing this because they think that they say that this is uh, this is counterfeiting and you are stealing an intellectual property of others. So if you are one of these people and watching, then I apologize. And like I said, this is for educational purposes and if for some reason you decide that you want to go down this road and you want to duplicate anything, then it should be for your own use and not for resale. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can be punished by a law as, you know, stealing other people's intellectual property. So, yeah, so once we get this out of the way, so let's get this begin. So sometimes I, when I build dioramas, you know, and let's say I'm using a crate or I'm losing using a barrel uh, or at this case, I'm going to need the muzzle covers, whatever. And I feel like I'm going to need more than one, but I only have a limited amount that I, you know, I feel like that. Why would I spend extra money if I can just go ahead and actually just duplicate it myself? So I want to show you guys how it's done. Like I said, this is strictly for educational home use purposes, okay? So do this only at home and don't go around and tell your friends that you do that or in model shows or any other places because people will look at you in a bad way. So um, yeah, so what you can do, how you can create things. So example, I have this shell, shell here and if you wanna uh, make a duplicate of it, that this is a perfect item that you can duplicate. Or example, I do have this. This is a 116 uh, scale. This is like a fire pit. It's like a half barrel with firewood and everything inside. So these would be the ideal things that you can cast at home. Uh, obviously, if you want to cast more complex and more complicated items, then uh, it's not easy to do it. So try to stick to simple things, simple things which got a flat side. So as you see, the shell's got a flat side. I can glue it down here or I can glue it down there. So these will be ideal items to cast. So example, if I would like to cast this one, so I have this from, uh, this is from King and Country and it looks pretty cool. You know, if I want to make a duplicate out of it, I wouldn't really be able to do it. And the reason being is because there is undercuts in this, in this model. So as you can see, the wing, the wings got an undercut here so if i would put this down and i would pour rubber on it and then once and i would take it out then obviously you would have you would have a mold like this so once you pour the resin in the resin would come up to the to the wings however you wouldn't be able to take it out of the mold and also due to that that this is coming upwards the and there would be rubber over here so the air wouldn't be able to to leave and due to that, it would create bubbles and it wouldn't come out the way as you want it. So again, like I said, whatever you want to duplicate, try to stick to simple things because example, this one, you would be only able to do it with a two, two sided mold, which you can't really make at home. It's not easy to do it. So however, if you want to give it a go and try to, to make it, then go for it. However, you need really like a pressure a uh, machine for it which is gonna help you to push the air out of the mold so it's not gonna be you know air bubbles and 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 mistakes be made so yeah so that is pretty complicated to do so you know try to stick to like simple things crates barrels something that you're gonna use a lot or let's say an army backpack or or whatever things that you're gonna you know that you're using quite often for your dioramas for me example I created molds for crates. As you can see, this is a ready-made mold. Uh, this is, you know, crates. Crates is something that you always use. You can you can put it on a truck, you can put it on the ground, you can, you know, ammo crates, this and that, different sizes, 
or you know bigger ones so i i made quite a few molds from things that i believe that i will going to use and i i am using it on on multiple dioramas so these are these are the good things to mold because it's simple there is no undercut this is a simple shape so it is easy to do also i i made a mold of a couple of like tarps and backpacks and things like this you know again it's like accessories that you that you're gonna use for your dioramas all the time and then you know you buy one why would you keep going and buying i think well i'm all about saving you know not to spend uh, uh, keep buying the same thing so if you can save and you can make a mold like this then it will be good forever and then you can make as much as out of it well also these molds they don't last forever so after let's say five six ten years they start to deteriorate and and then you have to create new ones so the life expectancy is is let's say five years or ten years whatever but well it's still in five years time how many dioramas you're gonna make how many backpacks or crates you're gonna need for your dioramas quite a lot isn't it so yeah so yeah you can create mods like this like i said i made a couple of them so i do have a few at home for all the crates and everything that i've been i've been using also with some bigger crates covered with tarps and things like this and i'm gonna show you guys how to how to do all this so the first thing you know you need to do is you need to find the objects that you wanna you wanna cast and then you need to find the place where you can buy the materials for it so as rubber i tried many rubbers uh, during these years and this is the best rubber that i found and this is the one that works for me the best so it's called Silastic 3481 okay so this is the name this is what you have to look for Silastic 3481 i'm usually buying it from this uh, company is east coast fiberglass supplies i will going to put the website link in the description and if any of you decide that you want to experiment and you know try molding things then uh, then you can visit that shop and you can buy from them because like I said, that is the best one I find so far. I tried all different kind of rubbers and none of them really worked as well as this one. So like I said, Silastic 3481, as, as you can see, it says high strength silicone molding rubber. So this is a one kilo kit. Uh, I think if I'm right, it goes about 25 pound probably, I think with tax and everything and plus delivery. So this is a one kilogram kit, as you can see it. So, and it also comes with, as you can see, it says 10% curing agent. So this is the curing agent that comes with it. So for one kilo, you get a 10 milliliter basically. So it's 10, so 10%. So for every 100 gram you use from the rubber, you need to add 10%. So that would be 10 gram of, of curing agent. So if you use the whole thing, then you need 100 grams. So always 10% you need to add from the curing agent. If you use, let's say, half a kilo, then you need to add 50 gram of this one. So to 200 grams of this, that means 20 gram of this. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. So it's always 10%. So this is what you receive in a kit. It costs 25 pounds and uh, you can choose next day delivery anyway so there is multiple options uh, look through the website if you guys are interested so this is the the rubber that i use this is what i recommend because this is the one worked for me the best however there is many different rubbers out there maybe some cheaper maybe some more expensive again you can uh, uh, experiment and you can look through which one is the one that's gonna work best for you so let's talk about the resin so there is multiple resins out there all right so you can buy really big quantities i think the biggest quantities that this shop is sell is a nine kilo kit so this is four and a half and four and a half it's two components so again it's a curing agent it comes with a curing agent so this is what i use uh, i don't know if you guys can see it so the name is sika and it's f180 so sika 180 this is what I use. I used previously Sika 190. The difference is, is the curing time. So in some resin, 
uh, it cures, you know, you there is a nine minutes resin. This is a three minutes one. So obviously, if you're just starting this and you just you haven't really done anything like this, then I would advise to go with the nine minutes resin, which is an F190, so F190. So that's gonna give you nine minutes. So once you go ahead and then mix these two components together, you will going to have nine minutes before it starts to cure. So that nine minutes gonna gives you enough time to pour them in your molds and you know to 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 get everything ready and then get it out of your little uh, mixing jar and then put them in the molds. So if you became more experienced and you're doing start to get used to doing this faster and faster, then you can use this one, which is what I'm using. So this is the Sika F180. This is a three minutes one. So here you only have three minutes, okay? So you put it in the little jar, you're mixing it up and it's after three, once the two components touches each other, you were going to have three minutes before it starts to cure. However, so you need to act quick. You need to get it out of your mixing jar and into the molds. Otherwise your mixing jar, it's gonna start to cure in there and then you kind of wasting the resin. So which you don't wanna do that. So this is a nine kilo kit. Um, also you can buy, uh, this is the previous one I had. See, this is the nine minutes one. So this is the F190. This is a one and a half, one kilo, I think, or yeah, this is a one kilo kit. So you can buy one kilo, uh, three kilos, and this is a four and a half kilo. So, I mean, it's nine kilos. So um, yeah, so different sizes you can buy. The bigger the size you buy, the cheaper it gets. All right, so it does actually make sense to buy a big one and then just have it at home. And then if you need, if you wanna cast anything that at least you don't have to keep buying and pay for delivery, then you can just get it done and buy a big one and it will be a home whenever you need it. So yeah, so F190 or F180, these are the ones that I usually used. Like I said, this is nine minutes. The other one is three minutes one. So you decide which one is good for you. Uh, prices are very similar. I think the F180 is a little bit cheaper. So the F190, it's gonna gives you like a beige color once it's, it, once it's molded. And the F180, it does going to give you a white color. So that's basically the difference between the two and also the curing time, three minutes or nine minutes. Again, your choice, I'm, I'm like I said, the F180 is cheaper. And I just like it better because it's just three minutes. It's more than enough for me. And uh, obviously if you do, you know, if you mixing a lot and you got lots of molds, then maybe the nine minutes one is better because you need to put it into a lot of molds and the times the three minutes gonna go is very quick. So, so yeah, so these are the resins. Again, I buy it from the same shop. This is the best shop I find. I'm from Newcastle, so this is pretty close to me. I can even drive there and pick them up or they can just deliver it. However, if you're living in England, if you're living in England, maybe these companies got different shops in different towns, or I'm sure they do delivery to all around England if you need it. So yeah, so these are the materials. So let me just put them down, put them away. So as I mentioned before, I want, I want, you know, I want to sell the, the, <clears throat> the the hull, the traveling hull that I had, and I don't, I don't need it. However, I really want to keep the, the barrels from it because I think it's cool. It's cool. It's covered and I can use it in, in other models as well. So, uh, first what you need to do before you start anything is you need to build a little box for your, for the item that you want to cast. So as you can see, I build it from wood. Uh, it's just some spare wood I found at home. So I just thought oh, this will be all right to use it. So of course you can build it from, you know, from plastic cards. You can build it from Lego, uh, literally from anything that you want, or you can use, you know, uh, if it's a bigger item, you can use a bottle from home. Like I, I'm gonna, you know, do the, the muzzle covers and I just use a, a little yogurt box so yeah anything basically will do it's it's really up to you what you want to use i couldn't find anything which would be suitable for this so i had to build this box but again like i said you don't need to build it from wood you can use plastic cards whatever so once you have 
the items that you want to cast and then you want to make a duplicate out of it for yourself all right <laughs> and yeah so you just build the box you put that you super glue them in make sure you super glue them really really well all right so don't be shy with a super glue because there's one thing that you want to avoid is when you pour the rubber in you want those little bits to stay on the bottom if you're not gluing it down well then obviously the super glue glue is gonna go away it's gonna push the items away and your item is gonna rise on the top and then then it's it's the whole thing you have to restart you have to pour pour the rubber out and then you have to find another box for it and then just glue everything down again once it's rised it will not be good so make sure you glue everything down as much as you can so it's not gonna move and also i decided that i will going to make a duplicate of the tent as well because this is something that i'm going to build i have multiple plans for building uh like railway dioramas and i think this will be cool extra to have so i don't know if i can buy them or if next time i'm gonna buy a platform wagon am i am i gonna receive any tents so who knows so i don't want to risk it until i haven't used these ones i decided to make a copy of it just so i can have it at home and i can have as many tents as i want in the future so yeah so these are the items that i want to cast as you can see this one came in a box so i didn't really need it to look for a box or build a box for it so i'm just uh, took the super glue and really super glued everything down However, the reason is why you want to really super glue it down, especially items, which is hollow from inside because the tent, it's hollow. So you really don't want the rubber to go underneath. You really want to avoid it because again, you wasting the rubber because that space will not be use, useful for you. So you're wasting the rubber. And again, there is a possibility that your item will rise on the top and then you have to restart all over again. So just go heavy with the super glue and make sure everything is glued down properly so it's kind of create a seal underneath so it does not gonna does not gonna go the rubber not gonna be able to to go in the in inside that hole so it will be sealed fully so yeah so these are the items that i want to cast so i thought i'm gonna make this video and i'm gonna show you guys how it's done and what materials you do need to use for it so when you start the the casting we did talked about that you do need the the rubber and then you need the curing agent so you always have to add whatever you use the 10 percent of that you add it as curing agent so this is quite a, a messy <laughs> a messy work with the rubber so i always use paper towels just to you know put it underneath and then just make sure um try not to to mess up the whole place so and once you open it i don't know if you can see it this is the rubber that you will get so it is just pure rubber and then you need the curing agent so as i used it previously this is only like a i don't know 400 grams left in it so i don't know if it will be enough or not however i'm just gonna take the whole thing and i'm just gonna put it in because i know this is how much left in this one which is need for this so yeah so this is the first thing what we're gonna do so then you're gonna need uh, like a big spoon or like a piece of wood something that you don't mind to mess up and um, it's again it's the same with the resin so let me just try to yeah so there you go i got a spoon from the mcdonald's so i don't need this so if it's if it's got ruined it's fine so yeah so this is the first step what we're gonna do so basically you just take it like i said whatever you use you need 10 percent so i got about 400 grams over here so i got about 40 grams of the curing agent in here so you just pure pour the curing agent in curing agent in and then once it's in you start to stir the whole thing as much as you can and i'm talking about not like a uh, like you need to really stir it very very well until all these red liquids basically turns the rubber into pink okay so this is what you need to do so you just gonna need to keep stirring stirring until all the all the red disappear and your whole rubber is turns into pink okay 
So it does gonna take a couple of minutes. So just bear with me, please, until I am stirring it. So more you stir it, you start to see that the red liquids disappear and the whole rubber turns into pink. So once that's done, I said you gotta give it a good stir, especially from the bottom. Always try to scrape it up because on on the bottom the, the rubber is still still there. So if, if you see any kind of like white comes up, then it means you haven't stirred it right. So you gotta keep stirring very, very, very well. And then once you're done with it, oh, it seems all right now. Let's see a little bit more. Oh, there you go, still some white bits coming up from there. So that means I haven't done a good job. So there you go, once it's done, then you don't want to waste any rubber. So you just let, let the spoon come off from the spoon, whatever it is in there. And then once it's done, it is quite tiring to, to, to stir it. So be prepared for that. <laughs> Especially if you're doing like a big mold out of something, then you need a lot of rubber. So it can be expensive, but yeah. So once it's done, then you are ready to pour the whole thing into the places. So what you're trying to avoid, you're trying to avoid pouring it straight on the top. So you always try to, to pour it on the side. All right. And just let the rubber flow around by itself. And then you're just looking to always when you're placing the item inside the little, in this case, this yogurt box, then try to leave about a centimeter from either side and also between the items if you're casting multiple items. So once you pour the resin in, it will be rigid. So it will not gonna, like the rest, the weight of the resin not gonna push the side of your molds out and uh, you're not gonna have like a, a, a misshaped uh, casting in the end. So yeah, once you put it in, it does set, set itself, so it level itself, so you don't need to move it or anything. And then there you go, this is it. One mold is done. Yeah, so you just put this away and it takes 24 hours for the rubber to cure, okay? So you don't want to do anything with it. You don't wanna touch it or anything. You just wanna leave it as it is and then it will cure itself and then it will be ready for you for the following day. So again, just trying to fill up these ones, try to put it on the side and not on the model because maybe the weight of the rubber would move, move it out of space. So you wanna kinda let it to, to fill up by itself. And then there you go. It is a slow work, it doesn't get done very quickly, but I mean, it is a very simple and effective way for you to create molds for extra things that you need. So there you go, almost done. Should be done in a minute. Hopefully I will have enough for everything. And there you go, we go into the other side now. Yeah, so sorry, I'm not talking um, on, on while I'm doing it, but it's the main thing is just so you see what's happening. So yeah, nicely fill it up, leave space above it. So, you know, don't just fill it up to, till until your, your items last. Like I said, leave, try to leave a centimeter on on either side, ex extra excess from the rubber. So it will, it will give you enough firmness for the, the items for the casting. Uh, there you go, I think it's almost done. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so that's it. Again, this one's done as well. It's nicely filled up. 
So, and then the last bit here with, with the tent. Let's see if I will have enough in, in here. Maybe yes, maybe no, we'll see. This one needs to be filled up fully. If for some reason you're doing it and if you, you run out of rubber and, you know, don't panic once it's set, then you can always buy again and you can, you can pour extra on the top once it's all, all done. So yeah, if it did happen with me many times that it wasn't enough, if it's not enough, that's not a problem. Just leave it. And then the following day when you receive the second uh, jar, then you can always pour more on the top and uh, it will help you complete the project, what you, you are doing. So yeah, and then in the end, you can always squeeze, like scoop out. There is a lot left in the tank. So you just need to, with the spoon, you just take everything out of it. So you let it, let it out, but it's nicely. It was just enough for this demonstration. This was 400 gram of resin, I mean resin, um, rubber, what I used currently here during this. So that's probably cost about, let's say 10 pounds. So from 10 pound of rubber, I was able to make three more, four molds. So, and there you go. It is completed, but like I mentioned, it is a very nasty process. So you will get dirty. So make sure you, you know, you have some paper towel next to you to, to wipe it, even your table or anything. So, but yeah, so this is how you create a mold. Uh, it is very simple. If you want, you can keep the spoon for the uh, later project for yourself if you need it. If not, then yeah, you can just chuck it out in the end. So yeah, so here we go, guys. This is how you create the molds, as you can see. So there's three molds there. In 24 hours time, those molds will be rock solid. And uh, then you can start casting with it. So yeah, so this was how to create a mold, how to place your items inside your little box that you create and now i am going to show you guys to how to basically pour out with the resin so what uh, let me just put these away so they will not be uh, here for no reason there you go so yeah so when you're doing the resin let's say we're gonna cast uh, a couple of crates here so I got the molds already after 24 hours. It turns really, really hard and it's really good. So like I said, this is the best rubber I have found previously. So, but again, there is many other rubber out there so you can experiment if you want. But for me, this is the one that works the best. So when you pour, when you use the resin, obviously you're going to need a scale, a digital scale. Um, if you are taking it from your mom's kitchen before you do anything with the resin, make sure you cover it with a, with a paper towel. Otherwise it's going to end up like this. Okay. So <laughs> be careful because like I said, it is a messy things to do. So yeah, you turn your scale on, you're probably going to need one of these. I just get it from the supermarket. I like it because it's, it's easy to pour with it. You can get away with like a glass, but with a glass, it's just a size like this. So it might goes all around. This is nicely gonna lead the resin out of the jar. So this is why I use this. So what you do is you put it on the scale and you have to zero it. All right. So make sure you zero it. So it goes to zero once the scale is on it and once you buy the resin, so first we start with the first component. So this is part one and you really need to shake it well because before you use it. So once you use it, once you shake it, then basically you just pour as much as you wish. So let's say I'm going to do, I'm going to do, let's say 30 grams. 
So I'm gonna, you're gonna need 30 gram of this. And with the resin, you go like the same amount you need to put from the, the hardener as well. So I put 30 gram from there, that one, and I need to put 30 gram from the part two as well. So you just keep looking the scale and be gentle so you're not gonna go over. So we had a 50, 58. Oh, a little bit went over. So now we're gonna need to put a little bit more from the other one. So we went over with three grams. It does happen quite often. So that's why you need to be very gentle with it. So it does not go over. So now we're looking for 66. Sixty-five. I'm happy with the sixty-five. I think that's all right. Again, as you see, spinning it all around, so it is a messy thing. Be be careful to, you know, to not to mess up, mess your room or your table or anything. So that's it. So now the two components are together. So now from now on, I do have three minutes, three minutes to make this happen. Okay. So. I usually use something again, like a wooden something, a piece of wood or a spoon, something that you're not gonna use never again because this is how it's gonna end up, all right? So now you're just gonna go and you really stir your resin together. Give it a good stir for, let's say 10, 15, 20 seconds or so. Once it's really stirred up and then you see that the color has changed, again, try to put this somewhere because it keeps gonna resin is gonna keep comes off from it and then once it's completed then basically you just go to your little molds and then you just start to pour them in and then you just go one by one nice and easy And if for some reason you make more resin than you would use, then just try to find another mold where you can just put it in and then later on you can finish it. Again, see I did, I did um, 66 gram and it was too much for that one. So I'm gonna use it for the little tarps and backpacks that I have mold for just so I'm not gonna, hoppa, see, this is what happens. Sometimes you do, it does overflow if, 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 if a mistake's made so you don't want to ruin your uh, tables or anything so yeah that's it again see still still too much resin i have left with so i'm gonna make pour the whole thing in here just in the end it will not be full i'm not even bothered about it later on at some point i can always return to it and then finish it to 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 complete it so yeah so this is it and then once it's done then basically you just pop them out of the mold um and then it's gonna it's it's gonna be ready you just need to clean it off and then you are good to go so this is how simple it is basically to cast something like i said it is not rocket science however if you want to cast something complex then uh, it will be you need the two-part molds for it and you need all kind of machine which is pushed like a pressure machine which is pushing all the air bubbles out of your resin so those are like manufacturers and factories they're using those ones to give you the best quality but for you uh, from home that this is the simplest and easiest way that you can do it but like i said only with simple objects, simple objects, which has got one flat side. There is no undercut on it or anything. So example, if I would want to go ahead and, and, uh, make a copy of this Panther turret, I wouldn't really be able to do it. One thing is imagine. So you put this down like this, you glue it down. The rubber would go, would flow through of the holes you wouldn't be able to take this out of your mold because it's rubber here it's rubber goes there rubber goes there everywhere 
And so if the whole thing is just would get filled up with, with rubber, you, you wouldn't be able to take it out. And another thing is, see, there is an undercut here. So if I would glue this down, see there, see, see the hole there. So there is an undercut and imagine that. So you flip this upside down when it's ready, but this part, it would be under the rubber that wouldn't be visible. So it means when you put the resin in, the bubbles wouldn't be able to come out. So he, this part, it would be full of, of, of bubbles and it would create, you know, bu air bubble holes on your resin. So you wouldn't be able to create it. Another thing you would be able to do is you cover all these holes with like a cellar tape or something. And then you, you, you glue it down and then you put the rubber on it. And then instead of being hollow, it would be full. So once you take it out of the mold, you wouldn't be able to recreate the hollowness. It, it would be just a, a solid one piece of casting. So yeah, uh, you wouldn't be able to do it. Actually, I do have a panther turret that I have casted. Let me just show you guys. Sorry about this. So yeah, so see, I have casted a panther turret previously because I like the sandbags and the zimmerit. So it's, I thought it's something that I can, I can use later on. But again, as you can see, uh, yeah. So it's no longer, you, you can't, you can't recreate the, the, that hole. You would need a two parts mold for it. So yeah, but I mean, you can do it, but again, I needed to build it up, build up the turret, close the hatch. So the rubber will not going inside the hole. You see what I mean? So yeah, so you can do things, but again, it, it is, it, it can be difficult because, because of the undercut here. And then, and you have to like get the air bubbles out of your, out of your, your molds just to, to avoid to creating, um, bubbles in it. But yeah, so there is a possibility to do it, but again, I mean, it, it's much harder and it's much more difficult. The ideal way, if you really want it to be hollow, then you need the two parts mold and it's something that you can't really make from home. So in the meantime, as you can see, the resin is already curing. So from the two components, they start to turn um white and then once they cure it takes about probably 10 15 minutes and then once it's done then you can just easily pop them out from your mold and they are ready to go afterwards so yeah i'm gonna wait a couple of minutes and i'm just gonna show you guys how it looks once it's completed so you guys can see the finished result but like i said this is the one that i did previously so this is how it ends up and it is just gonna be one big solid resin piece but yeah again please 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 guys this is for your own personal use only all right otherwise uh they would say you're committing a crime or so so you don't want to do that and yeah, you know, it, I would recommend that if you're using the resin, you're putting the resin, always trying to wear gloves. Obviously I didn't pull too much, so I wasn't really bothered about it, but try to wear gloves because if the resin goes on your finger, it is a, it is a nasty thing. And once it's, once it's dries, then it's like, it becomes like, um, like a super glue on your skin. So you have to like scrape it off afterwards. So. Yeah, try to avoid that. I mean, you can avoid it by wearing a glove. And again, this is resin, it's chemicals. It's not good for your skin. So yeah, don't, don't do it without a glove and uh, protect yourself at all the time. And once your items are ready and if you need to send them, make sure you wear a mask because resin is a nasty thing and you don't wanna breed it in or anything. So yeah. They always protect yourself and protect your health. All right. So yeah. So let's see how the, the molds looks like. Yeah. So are they, they are already, they are already solidifying. So probably a minute or two and I can already pop them out just for the purpose of this video, just so I can show you guys the results. And uh, once the resin cure, it really, the whole thing starts to heat up. So your mold's going to get heated up. But well, yeah, so let's pop them out. So I'm not going to waste this uh, video too long. Well, obviously they are not fully 100% cured. Okay, so they are still, they are still very, oh, they're very solid. So yeah, let's not mess around with this one. But yeah, you still need to leave them. I didn't leave, give too much time to it. But yeah. So 
once it's out well this is still very solid see if you're not waiting enough then you can actually like destroy them because it's not really fully cured so you don't wanna you don't wanna ruin your items by taking them out too quick the reason i just did it i just don't want you to guys sit here and wait and <laughs> nothing happening so yeah this is a good demonstration as well it's just to see to give it time all right so don't rush it if you rush it this is what's gonna happen it's not fully cured so it's not really usable so that goes to the bin and then you wait with it and once you wait it then you can put it pop it out there you go now it's already these ones are good see so there you go and voila it's a crate and this is how easy it is to create a mold and to create a duplicate of something that you need for your future dioramas all right so that's it guys that would be all uh thanks for your time i hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial i hope you learned something from it and if you need to you know you need more crates for your dioramas then instead of spending more money then you can just make it for yourself if you need it so yeah that would be all thanks for your time again and uh, i will put the company website uh, link into the description which is called east coast fiberglass supplies so if you guys want to buy rubber or resin that at least you know uh, which place to look for so yeah that would be it hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for your time and have a lovely day for you guys take care bye bye